Here at the 2024 NBA All-Star Game in Indiana, the 24th annual NBA Tech Summit, and I am joined by the ninth richest person in the world, Steve Ballmer. How you doing, sir? Good, yeah. good. Thanks, Jabari. I appreciate it. Uh, listen, I was watching you on stage, and you know, when I come to these events from time to time, I'm, I'm always curious to find out what people are learning. What, what, what is the most important thing you've learned at the Tech Summit this year? Yeah, I mean, we're second panel, but I'm already learning about just from our panelists. Yeah. You've got you know, folks from Google and Amazon and ESPN. And, okay, how are they really thinking about what's the future of mm -hmm. streaming? Are they thinking about innovation? And that's on my own panel. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm gonna go back in and next guy uh, up right now is a, a really genius guy I worked with at Microsoft, Eric Horvitz. Okay, he's on the pulse of what's going on in AI. He'll be able to tell us where things are going. I'm staying for the following panel, and there is a lot, there are a lot of nuggets, not just about sort of deeply technical issues, but how people are thinking about problems. Yeah, I was just at the ITI in D.C. at their conference, and one role that's coming online, chief AI officers, how companies have to prepare for them, chief AI, or do you have a chief AI officer at the Clippers yet, and if not, are you going to hire one? We don't. Now, our core, we, we do our own stuff, but we rely for core tech on the NBA. Mm -hmm. So, you know, each owner gets a chance to push a little bit on the yeah. people doing R&D at the league. Uh, I'm, I will bet they'll have a chief AI officer sooner than later. Yeah. You need them. You need them. Here, we're in February now, so I don't want to uh, let the month escape us. Black History Month is this month. When you think about, outside of the notable names, the Martha Kings of the world, but when you think about a figure uh, that may have inspired you throughout your life, you know, in Black History Month, who, who pops to mind? Uh, throughout my life means go back to childhood. Mm -hmm. um, I'd honestly say Muhammad Ali, actually. Wow. Now, that partly shows you my age, but I don't know, sort of the way he brashly sort of showed up on stage and was sort of true to what he believed. Um, maybe an odd choice, but I'd certainly put him on my list. Yeah, I think it's a great choice. I Had a chance to go to a game the other day with uh, Mr. Martin Luther King III. Mm. That was inspiring because you know it's sort of like this small connection. And he's a wise man, really. He has a lot of wisdom and, and goodwill to, to help others himself. Yeah. I gotta say that was cool, yeah. uh, even though I just met him. Absolutely, yeah. Well listen, let's get into the business, right? The last time me and you spoke, you were going through this decision of whether to put 40 locker sneaker stalls or 20, <laughs> and you were going back and forth with the number. What did you decide on? Because you're only a few months, right, before you gotta open this arena, so you have to have that number. What, what did you decide I on? I believe we shook out at 36. 36. 36. That's not a bad compromise. No, yeah. no, it's yeah. not at all. Yeah. Um, we sort of looked at the guys who have the most shoes at their locker in yeah. our current practice facility, yeah. and we kind of built off that. Yeah. Well, now you have James Harden, so I'm sure he probably takes the cake with that. Yeah. Uh, him and P.J. Tucker, actually. Wow. P.J.'s a lot of, you know, a lot of shoes guy. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yes, he has his own warehouse, though, so I mean, we need the stalls. <laughs> um, looking into that, though, and also the last time I saw you, you weren't the happiest because I think you guys were getting, you lost to the Nuggets without their MVP, right? And I knew, I looked at your face throughout the game. You were just red. But now you should be smiling, right? The team is in a good spot. Third place in the West as we, as we speak right now in, you know, competition, right? And they could very well finish number one. You liking what you see with this roster? And do you feel more comfortable about your title chances? Yeah. Well, I think our team has improved. We've improved by the addition of James. I can't remember whether he had joined us yet at that time. Uh, the guys now seem to know how to play together. Uh, and yet we know we have room for improvement. Mm. Uh, Kawhi Leonard, uh, in a comment the other day, said, yeah, we can improve for sure. We're winning as individual stars, but we have more opportunity to come together and play better as a group. Guys all get along, so it's just a question of how to c continue to improve uh, as five guys. Yeah, I've covered Kawhi throughout his career. I can't believe he said all of that. I mean, this is, this is a guy who's very small, but he says this. Um, you, speaking of your arena, you are a few months before this opens, right? Well, take me into the dome. What's happening? Where are you at? I know the roof is finished. Where is that construction process? Well, if you were to ask me as a non-construction guy, will they be done by the end of June? Yeah. I'd say frickin' no way. Mm. Now, they're all very confident and they say we're ahead of where a lot of other yeah. arenas have been at this stage. 
But we're starting to do finishes, for example, in the suites. The, the scoreboard is, uh, mo is getting fully installed, yeah. which, is, which is great for us. Uh, we are still building out what we call our sunken garden. There's a place for players, a training pool, and some other things outside. Uh, that's a big, big thing because we've got to make sure all the underground work it has integrity for water and flow and, and the rest of that. We got a torture test mm. on, on waterproofing. Wow. Uh, it's the heaviest rain season LA's had in years. Yeah. And guess what? I welcome it. <laughs> <laughs> it gives us a chance to see, okay, we needed to increase these gutter sizes. Yeah. And so uh, I love that. Um, but you know, the, the next generation markets we're building where you just grab and go. Oh. You can see some of those completely finished at nice. this stage. It's nice. pretty cool. I'm looking forward. The next All-Star game I attend will be 2026. I'm skipping next year because I'm going right to 2026. I want in that dome. Can you give us a preview of what's to come? I mean, I know it's about a year and a half away, plus some, but still, like... No, what, we'll be open for next season. Well, the All-Star game. All the All-Star game, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what's to come in 2026? Do you have any ideas flowing in your head right now about what you're going to look and what you're going to see? Specifically for All-Star... I think what we'd really want to do is use the board to light things, mm. you know, to really do some, it's a place where, you know, we can do some crazier things working with the league, obviously. Yeah. Uh, our wall of sound, 51 straight rows, steep, no break. I think having a place where we can put together the most intense fans of the league, the all-star fans, can bring a, an energy to the the building. Yeah, All Star is always fun, but getting getting a little bit of crazy energy in there, I think that that'll be good for yeah. the, for for All Star game. You know, I don't know if the format's going to continue to evolve. Hopefully, uh, the league will tell us. Yeah. the league office. But I think there's a lot because we have, you know, you have to look at what we build as a as a what should I say platform. We have thought through the scenarios for how we're a platform for the Clippers and now also for a platform for concerts. The All-Star Game, I'm sure there'll be extra innovation. Yeah. Listen, I hope this is all, because when I talk to other team CEOs and presidents, I'm telling them, listen, Steve Baum's going to blow y'all out of the water with this arena he's building. I'm telling you, like this, it's y'all better get y'all act together. I know the Sixers are trying to get their arena downtown, and I'm telling them, you guys better get your act together. So I'm really excited about this arena. Yeah, I mean, we, we are partners. We, we don't compete, uh, but we're, we're the most recent arena. And somebody will race by us, and that, that is what it is. But if there's some, you know, and do I think any, everybody will say, oh, I like that innovation? No, they're going to say, Bomber screwed that up. I don't want to do that. <laughs> they're going to look at something in Milwaukee. I mean, we want to, I don't know, 20 or so of the arenas yeah. as part of the process. And there's something you can steal from everybody is a good idea. I hope the next folks up go to a lot of arenas. If there's some stuff from us, great. I'll, I'll feel proud of that. Uh, but there are going to be other innovations that people pick up. Yeah. I had a chance to talk and look at your panel for a little bit before coming in here to meet you. And uh, one of the things you were talking about is the streaming portion of it, right? You know, we're looking right now, Amazon's in the mix. They, well, they're more in the mix. They've already been in RSN because when they were with the Yankees, with the Yes Network, and now you got Fox and Disney and Warner Brothers com you know, combining their own streaming services. Uh, I talked to people about this, and they call it the great rebundling. That's what they call it, the great rebundling. What do you see, and what are we looking at? It is the great unbundling. That's a, that's a fair thing to say. You know, from the perspective of the content provider, our job is innovation and audience. Right. That's our job. The bundling is in the role of the distribution system, and there's two parts to the distribution system. The people who do the bundles and buy the rights, and then the, you know, the operators who run the cable connections or you know, phone connections or whatever. And the relationship, I think, between the bundlers and that ecosystem will change. The relationship between the bundlers, you know, the leagues may do some things directly. So how that all comes together in terms of bundles and who's offering them and who's marking them, you know, there's a lot to be revealed. Yeah. 
You take it outside of sports for one second. What are we looking at from a macroeconomics perspective? I'm looking at two wars going on. I see inflation is still there, right? I know Microsoft and Oracle and Google, you guys are completing you know, or, or competing for footprints to serve the next generations of people. There's data centers and all. What are we at? Where are we at in 2024? And what still keeps Steve Ballmer up at night? All right, first of all, I'm not an economist. But I did take economics. I'm a, I have a sort of a degree kind of in, a, in economics, but I've never practiced. But just from my read of the situation, uh, I think things actually are on a pretty good path economically. Uh, but there are some big risks. So you can be doing this, but there's a chance to have these things, whether it's from war or things change in the labor market, immigration can change the labor market, but I have one big scary thing, uh, two big scary things on my mind as we think about the future. One is, will we be able to save our planet as we know it because of climate change? Uh, and the second big thing uh, on my mind is the federal budget deficit. 32 trillion? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, extremely large at this stage. I don't believe anything like that is sustainable, nor do I think, by the way, either political party really focuses on, on it. No. You know, one party wants to get rid of revenue, uh, and one party wants to increase expenses. But, you know, whether revenue go goes down or expenses go up, it doesn't shrink any deficits. No. Yeah, we've got to obviously get that balance, right? Is it the way you see it? Yeah, you probably for our country to s stay sustainable, and yeah. I'm not talking about climate right. now, but from a financial perspective, yeah, we need more taxes somehow, and we need less spending somehow. All right, get you uh, out of here. We two, need both. Two quick things before I let you go, because I know you want to get back to the tech summit and take some more notes. Uh, uh, the first being, you know, when you look at Forbes.com and you see your worth. What do you say to that? You say, oh, that's wrong, right? Because we got you at $120 billion, and you're the ninth person in the world. Are we right on that? Well, I'm never going to tell you if you're right or wrong, <laughs> because that's how you guys add your value. Yeah. Uh, what I will tell you is that it is, you know, look, I've been blessed. It, it, and certainly my, my lifestyle could be supported by way less money than we have. So... Our goal has to f be to figure out how to add value to people who more need it than we do, whether it's supporting after-school programs or mentoring programs or changes in the criminal justice laws or more preschool for kids, working with government, uh, making investments in people who are pushing for climate, different kind of uh, climate uh, tax environment, et cetera, to, to help improve the climate situation. That's what our money is for at this stage. Yeah. We have to be a good steward of that. You know, it's not the one thing that changed my lifestyle is being able to buy the Clippers and build the Intuit Dome. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and that, I'm so glad for that blessing. But even those things, do we own them? Or are we just stewards for the fans until the next generation of people buy them? Stewards. I think we're really stewards. Yeah, you said in the past that you will never share, sell your Microsoft shares. But are you going to pass them and give them away? Because you and your wife, you give a lot. Of well, time. I mean, there'll be, you know, certainly a big chunk of it that will go to a foundation, I would suspect. We don't have one now, but right. we, we give away money, but we don't have foundation. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, some will go to our kids and... The rest you can pass on to me if he wants to. The rest know. is going to go to the federal government. <laughs> they need it. They need it more, more than anybody. Well, yeah. So, yeah. in a way, I'm, I'm happy to pay our taxes. Yeah. When we pass, I'm glad the government... That's the wealth tax. When we pass, half of what we want to give away... Well, it either goes to a foundation or something goes to our kids and the federal government gets every bit as much as we give to our kids. Absolutely. Get you out of here on this. Good to great. Jim Collins' book. I love that book, right? What is the difference between a good tech company and a great one in 2024? Well, first and foremost, frankly, is you have to, you know, tech, I don't know if you remember a movie called Woody Allen or a line in it, but they said this about relationships. They're like sharks. They either move forward or they die. Yeah. 
tech companies are like sharks. They either move forward or they die. So really locking in to future innovations, building on future innovations, not saying, oh, we'll only give our customers what they want. No, you have to anticipate what they might want that they can't dream about. And I think that, that distinguishes a great tech company. And you also have to listen to your customers, be accountable, make results. You can't, you can't say it's either or. There's a, chap, a small chapter in one of the Collins books called The Tyranny of Or. Mm -hmm. I can either make a lot of money short term or I can invest in the future. Now, the great companies figure out how to do both. That's what the Collins book said it, to me in its most meaningful chapter. Absolutely. Steve Ballmer, I appreciate the time. We got to do this again because so much to talk about. Generative AI and all this other stuff. And protein bars. And, and, how you're still, <laughs> and you still don't drink caffeine and no, all sir. of that stuff. Yeah, no, so sir. much to talk about it. But good luck the rest of the way. I know how tough it is and health and all of that. And hopefully you can raise that championship trophy. Appreciate yeah, it. Appreciate Thanks, it. Jabari. No problem.